Okay, uh, well, I'm not really going to concentrate only on reduced diameter because we haven't had a part of the program yet that's really dealt with the edentulous arches and management from a prosthodontic point of view. Um, Herod did a really good job of telling you about what options you have in terms of, of reduced diameter implants. And I know Waldemar will talk to you a lot about what options you have to alter the anatomic environment so that you can use perhaps wider diameter implants if, if that's what your choice is. I think the three of us would agree. Use the best products available. At the moment, the best products available are made from rock solid. That they're a titanium zirconium alloy. It's extremely strong, which means that the reduced diameter implant does not have the same likelihood of biomechanical failure as, as implants we used in the past. Not only is it very strong, but it is the best material available from a biologic point of view. It has the SL active surface. The SL active surface on rock solid actually is biologically superior to the SL active surface on titanium in the early phases in particular of the healing process. By the time we get to six or eight weeks and it's considered to be integrated, in, in other words, it can be loaded by the prosthodontist, then it really doesn't matter. But in the phase of care that most people are interested in, that early part where the implants are still at greatest threat, it's important to use the best materials you can. Uh, same as always, when I stand up, I'm going to tell you this lecture is full of information that I've gathered over the years and worked with both Waldemar and in particular Will on, on the patients we treated. Some of these go back to, to the time in Florida. And a lot of the information that I want to give you about managing edentulous patients, uh, the, these are philosophies we've developed over 20 years of working together. They don't, they don't come about quickly because you need time to observe.